Welcome back to True Vine Talks with Rachel and Linda. Hope you're having a good weekend. And today we have an important topic to discuss. And, you know, most of us suffer or have suffered with it. And what is that, Rachel? Anxiety. Ooh, anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what is anxiety? If our listener is not real familiar with that word. Yeah. So anxiety is kind of experiencing symptoms of worry, stress. Um, Sometimes it can interfere with sleep patterns or eating habits. Um, It's just being consumed with worry. Yeah. That's a good definition because we get you know, like amped up Mm -hmm. and our bodies go into, you know, that fight or flight. And sometimes there is a poisonous snake and we need to be amped up. Yes. You know, I was walking in the park one day, going on my little hike, doing my self care. Mm Mm-hmm. And I come up on a snake and it wasn't just any snake. The snake rattled, and he rattled his tail at me, and I ran back in the other direction. I too. <laughs> Screaming. This is Beach Fork Lake. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And how did anxiety help me then? Uh, you were not worried about anything other than getting away from that snake, which protected you. Good. So anxiety serves as a protective factor. Mm -hmm. So I needed to have the norepinephrine and epinephrine run through my veins to move me into action. So anxiety was helpful. Have you had an experience where anxiety helped you? Um, Yes. So I think it was like about a month ago. I'm driving to go see my sister and I see this vehicle just coming over in my lane. Mm. And I'm like, what are they doing? And I had to jerk. I, I, I got kind of just driven off the road, but my anxiety kept me focused on counter steering and just making sure that I didn't go crazy, um, flip my vehicle or anything. Uh, but mm. it was very scary, but it kept me focused on my mm. task at hand kept me alive good example that had to be scary super yeah yeah they were probably on their cell phone oh i don't know but <laughs> i beat my horn <laughs> a little bit afterwards like, yeah. right, right. you almost <laughs> killed me yeah exactly so the threat was real yeah, very yeah so the potential threat is i'm gonna wreck and die yeah yeah and you anxiety safeguarded you Gratefully, I'm very grateful. Me too. So, a lot of clients, sometimes they believe anxiety is a bad thing. But in these two examples that we described, it served a purpose. And what was the purpose? Keep you alive. Keep you alive. Right. So, that's the good type of anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. We call it eustress the good stress we need to act if we're in danger then we have distress which is the other type of anxiety and that's the not so good stress and can you kind of describe for me what that would be for our clients like yeah I'm trying to think of a good example so uh, that would be like when you get that that text or that email hey, I need to talk to you about something. And you're like, oh gosh, what is it? What did I do? How did I mess up? What am I, <laughs> you just all of the neg- just negative, negative, yeah. negative, negative. And then, you know, you talked to that person and it was absolutely nothing. They're just like, couldn't find something. And mm-hmm. they knew you had it last and you would be able to tell them where it is. So, good example. Thanks. Yeah, it's that, it's that, um, you sent me an email and you got something you got to tell me. And I start 
revving up in my mind. Mm -hmm. What happens? What's good? Did I do something wrong? Am I a failure? Yeah. Fear of being rejected by that person. That it's like that build up of negativity mm -hmm. that just interferes with your day, and you cannot concentrate on anything else until that problem has been settled or resolved or whatever. Because all you're gonna do is worry about it. Mm hmm. Right. That's good. And sometimes people have, you know, anxiety about coming to counseling. Oh, yeah, they do. So, you know, if you're our listener and you're thinking about coming to Truvon for counseling, we'd like to help you with that, you know. That fear of the unknown, not knowing what, what it's going to be like. Is it scary? I don't know this person. Are they psychoanalyzing me? Yeah. Like, good. Stranger danger. Yeah. Even though you're an adult coming or, you know, you might be a kid. Yeah. It's a stranger danger. So some anxieties have been, you know, ingrained in us since childhood too. You know, don't talk to the stranger. You know, don't walk in unknown places. You know, safeguarding. So how do we help clients with those, you know, what we would call unwarranted fear or irrational fear and unwarranted fear let me let me kind of you know describe this um well he describes unwarranted fear as in your brain you you get this sensory information from your outside world that something is bad's going to happen and it's not even happening it's kind of like when we roamed with dinosaurs Okay, the dinosaur was a true threat. Mm -hmm. That was warranted fear, necessary fear to stay alive. Get in that cave, right? Yeah. So the amygdala of the brain remembers that we had to survive some pretty crazy stuff. Our ancestors did. So how do we approach that now? in that we don't have necessarily dinosaurs that are going to take us out, T-Rex, but we do have some external threats. And what is a real fear versus not a real fear? Mm. Good question. Real fear would be, you know, Oh my goodness, I'm going to crash my car. I'm getting run off the road. Yes. Um, irrational fear would be uh, I'm go. I'm driving or, you know, I'm, I'm sitting in the waiting room for a, a job interview and I'm just talking myself down, you know. Mm -hmm. Why am I even here? I'm never going to get this job. I, I've mm -hmm. got bills to pay. How am I going to ever, you know buy my kids that those toys they want for Christmas and um, yeah so it's like working yourself up there's a perceived threat that maybe you know those things aren't really happening you did you do still have a job you're just interviewing for another job right. right right and then you're you're sitting there thinking about the what ifs so a lot of unwarranted fear and your rational fear comes from what ifing mm-hmm what if this happens? What if that happens? And yeah. so you put your amygdala into fight or flight, and your body produces norepinephrine and epinephrine, and there's no real threat. There's no rattlesnake. There's no car coming over on you. It's just happening to you. Mm -hmm. And some, some neuroscientists, they believe some people... Some people's brains are more wired that way to feel threatened when they're not really in a threatening situation. So people that truly suffer with anxiety, it's somewhat genetic. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So anxiety is, is very um, debilitating at times for people. And so I, I think that 
as counselors here at True Vine, we want to help you. We want to help you navigate what's real fear and what's not. Yes. So, Linda, talk a little bit about, because Linda is my supervisor, my ALP supervisor, and she teaches me so much. I'm so glad that I met her. And uh, I would love for her to explain to you all how she helps clients manage their anxiety in sessions, some of the coping strategies that you teach folks. Yeah. And can I just, like, self-disclose a little bit? Oh, absolutely. Cool. So, Rachel, I'm real candid with you in supervision about my own struggles Mm -hmm. and how relevant that is in me being a helper for others. Um, as a young lady in high school, we had we were I was in the band. And I was a majorette and I twirled my baton. Yes, and I was, yeah, I loved it. <laughs> I was a band geek, of course, right? Um, and on the days of competition, there the audience. I would look up in the audience and I would see all these faces, and my mind would just go blank. Mm. And fear would overcome me. I would forget the routines. Mm. I would pass out. I had an ambulance come and get me, I think, several times, as I recall. Oh, wow. So the panic would almost debilitate me in that moment. And it was scary. That's very scary. Yeah. And I had all all the girls were dependent on me to do my routine with them. We had, you know, coordinate and do these things. And it was very... Um, exhausting um so when I help people with you know anxiety and panic disorders I want them to know I've experienced it myself and there was more happening you know during those years but that was one instance where I get panic yeah you've been there (laughs) yeah yeah and it's scary because your your chest is tight your heart's racing and you get so overwhelmed that your body just passes out. You just can't take it anymore. Yeah. Um, so anxiety is scary and panic is very scary. And once I learn how to breathe and cope with it and, you know, use a paper bag. They gave me the paper bag. Linda, breathe into the paper bag. Breathe in, breathe out. They would help me calm down. These are the wonderful EMTs. They they recognized it was panic. There was no physiological happening. Um, so I'm so passionate for people who suffer with anxiety because I get it. You know, it's it's hard mm-hmm. to overcome. Um, so what are you know some techniques that I'm talking about? Is you know in helping my clients, I teach them mindfulness. What do you think of, Rachel, when you think of just being mindful? And we've kind of processed that a little bit. Yeah, I think, you know, being present in the moment, meditation. Um, I also think of gratitude, finding something to be grateful for and focusing your energy on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. And what happens to the brain when we sort of just get still... Breathe in, breathe out, you know, and just sort of be aware of what where we're at, what we're feeling, what we're smelling, what we're seeing. Mm-hmm. What sort of happens to the brain? Well, I'm a very visual person, so I always have yeah. like little images that I like to explain to people. So I, I think of um, like he- those little glitter jars where they've got like some clear liquid and a lot of glitter. Yeah. And we get all shook up. And the glitter is swirling around in there. You know, that's our brain. Mm -hmm. We've got all these worries and thoughts and things going on in our life. And then as we do some mindfulness, Mm -hmm. it's just kind of like imagine that glitter like settling Mm. to the bottom of that bottle or that jar. um, And just kind of clearing it out. Ooh, that's good. Do you have one for your office? I need to get one. It's been on my list because I think that's good for kids to like see that. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Um, And and some basic human fears, you know, is fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown, fear of death, isolation, and loss of self-dominance. 
And the last one, self-dominance means being able to take care of me, being able to wash myself, being able to brush my teeth. You know, when you're a baby, your mom does all these things for you. Um, and as you get older and you, you lose some of that self-dominance and the ability to take care of yourself, that, that's a real fear for people. Um, oh, yeah, I can so, see why. Well, that, that independence. Yeah. So in helping clients, I like to try to target what is the fear, what is happening. And sometimes people aren't even aware that they fear failing. Mm. <laughs> and that gets them stuck. Or they fear like the person they care about is going to reject them in some way. So I try to enable people to process, identify, what, what are you really scared of right now? What's really happening for you? Ooh. How do you like that? I like that, yeah. So I think we do get really disconnected mm. from our emotions and what's actually happening. You know, we, we feel anxious mm -hmm. and we know we're worried. Um, but maybe, maybe we don't go deeper than that. You know? mm. I'm an anxious person. And that we get stuck there. So, you know, that's why I'm, so I'm thankful that people you know, are coming to counseling and seeing people like you that can really make them dig deeper yeah. and figure out, well, what it, what, where is the worry coming from? Mm -hmm. What are you truly afraid of? That's a deep question. Yeah. And we all, as humans, are struggling with some type of fear, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and even as counselors, I fear, you know, will my, will my client like me? Um, will this session be helpful? Yeah, will they come back? <laughs> will they come back? Totally. Am I getting it right? Am I getting it right as your supervisor? Mm -hmm. Is it helpful to you? And if I'm not, then I feel inadequate in some way. See, so we all have fears that come up for us in our interactions. And helping your client, what is it you're, you're struggling with on a daily basis? What do you fear? What is your unmet need? And so once you identify what that fear is, what do you imagine would be some good techniques to help them? Well, I would think once you have helped them identify that unmet need mm -hmm. would be trying to figure out a way to get it met. Am I on the right track? <laughs> That's it. Okay. Yeah. So if I fear rejection, okay, if I fear my client would reject me in some way, how would I combat that? How would I fight that fear? Oh, man, they're just not going to like me. They're never going to come back. What could I do in my thoughts, in those moments when I'm interacting with them and that fear keeps coming up, you know, it's in the back of my mind. They might reject you. They don't like you. What can I do to combat that? As the, as the counselor? Yeah. That's the anxiety that you're feeling in session? Okay, sure. Um... Some, I didn't frame that good. I'm sorry. No, I think I just get distracted. <laughs> We're all like, ah. um, I think, you know, the, um, paying attention to your self-talk and um, reminding yourself that, you know, I have a lot of clients that I've seen consistently for a long time and they tell me that this is really helpful to them. Um, so, you know, we it, even if this person doesn't come back, it doesn't mean that I'm a bad counselor. This maybe just wasn't the right fit for them. Ooh. Well, you just did it so nicely. You helped me know that, hey, maybe I wasn't a good fit, but that didn't mean that I was a bad counselor. So you just reframed it. Yeah. Well, I reframe my thoughts daily, so I have a lot of practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We all have, you know, it's... I think sometimes people think that counselors have it all together and like, no, we're, you know, we struggle just as much as anybody else. We just, we've learned the skills and we put them to use and now we're teaching other people how to do that. 
Exactly. And that feels good to help people face their own stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And help them. How do you want to reframe this fear of being rejected by your boss? You know? How do you want to reframe this fear of your spouse not wanting you, feeling inadequate in some way? You know? Mm -hmm. Those underlying things, which is EFT therapy, is kind of where we go to help people deal with that angst, the anxiety. Yeah. So, if you come to Truvon, we want to really dig deep and find out what will work for you. Is it reframing your thoughts? Is it getting into some mindfulness? What other techniques might we use to help clients with their... Yeah, I like, um, and every time, before I always, before I go into these two skills, I always say, and I know you're going to roll your eyes at me because your counselor is telling you to breathe. (laughs) It's kind of like that stereotype of, oh, just take a deep breath. But it really does help. Mm -hmm. Um, The deep breathing, I think we've talked about it on a a previous podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, It we talk about your brain going into fight or flight and that signals to your brain that you are safe. You know, the rattlesnake is gone. You're back on the road. Yeah. And I did that myself cause I, I was still uh, pretty jittery and anxious even after I, I got back on the road and that person took off. Um, so I, I had to do some deep breathing while I was driving to get kind of calmed back down. Mm. So deep breathing. I also like um, progressive muscle relaxation. Yeah. That's a really good one. Mm -hmm. Um, So that would be like, you know, if I focus on my shoulder area, I'm going to tighten all the muscles in my shoulders as tight as I can and hold it for three to five seconds. And then uh, relax, relax, relax. Yeah. Clench my fists up. Relax. You just work on different areas of the body. And that's a really good one. I tell people who have trouble falling asleep because they're anxious and they're just thinking about everything they have to do the next day and they don't know how they're going to get it all done. That's a good way to relax and Mm. try to fall asleep. Cool. That's so cool. Yeah. (laughs) What what strategies do you like? Or uh, what do you suggest people do outside of counseling? Because it's not all in session, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right, and we did the self-care last weekend, and, you know, if you are getting in 30 minutes of cardio exercise daily, what happens is you're putting your body into fight or flight. You are in control of putting your body into an adrenaline rush. So when the rattlesnake or the ladies coming over on you on the road happens, you are still feeling in control of that norepinephrine and epinephrine. So you have more physiological control over your body's reaction to the fearful event. So then does that, that's really interesting, does that help? Mm -hmm. Like, so purposefully putting yourself in that state Mm -hmm. and gaining control of that state, does that then help the next time that it happens kind of spontaneously? Correct. Oh, cool. Yeah. Like it's a mind-body reaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've studied the whole, you know, physiological, mental part of exercise. And it's, you know, people are like, oh, man, I just can't work out. You know, it's just be too much for me. And I'm like, if you have anxiety placing your body into that state of fight or flight versus being placed in fight or flight helps combat those negative symptoms that you experience. And, you know, that's just, that's been one of the most pronounced positive self-cares for me and for others who have anxiety and depression. Of course, depression falls into that too. Yeah. So, um... There's a lot of um, a lot of studies on that. People need to kind of study that up. So, and also, you know, you want to do your prayers, your meditations. You want to, you know, sip on your coffee and watch the birds. Mm-hmm. You want to, you know, just acknowledge that you're safe. 
and you're mostly safe. You know, most of the time there's not a dinosaur. There's not a threat. Um, now, there are spontaneous threats that happen, like the shootings in El Paso. Mm. You know, our prayers go out to them. Yes. Very sad. And, you know, those threats are potential threats in life. Um, how often do they happen? Not very often. Mm. All right. So, so I think it's for helping our clients here at Truvine, we really want to do a few things, right? We want to, you know, identify what their fears are, yeah, and help mm-hmm. them to face some of those fears. And we want to help them reframe and learn how to think differently about those perceived threats. Yes. Is that helpful? Yeah, I think so. And I also think that, like, I want everyone out there to know, you know, if you've never been to counseling and you're considering it, first and foremost, this is a place, uh, you know, like a safe place for you to discuss your anxiety and your fears. We're going to be non-biased, non-judgmental. You know, this is not like going to your best friend or a parent and where they say, oh, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Just brush it off. Like, if you're seeing a good counselor, you will never hear those words. Correct. I'm glad you added that because a counselor isn't going to be dismissive. Exactly. Or minimize your hurt or your fear. If they do, you better find a new counselor. Yes. Because the threat is real in your mind and it's there for a reason. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter the reason. Right. We're here to help you figure that reason out. Yeah. yeah. And help you combat it with tools that we've studied for years. And use ourselves. And we are going to be your, your safe person to go to and share your unmet needs, longings, and fears. And that's what Rachel and I are doing here at True Vine. And we hope that if you have some anxiety, that you would come and see us. Yes, please. Please do. And we appreciate you joining us for another talk with True Vine. Bye. Bye.